Yes, you have done great things, O oh Lord. And we can only say thank you, but also bless your holy name. Thank you for each one of us in this cathedral. Thank you for each one of us watching through different platforms. But more so, thank you for Jesus that you've done so many great things, O oh Lord. And we are able to feel you that even now your presence is real in our lives. So speak to us, O oh Lord, this afternoon. That yes, to remember one thing, that you, our God, will hear us when we pray. That our God will hear us when we pray. That our God will hear us when we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And um, thank you again for those of you who have joined us physically. Thank you for those of you who are on um, different platforms. And uh, sometimes we are also on television, live, especially at lunch hour. The name is Jasper Tumhimbise. And uh, the topic today is my God will hear me. My God will hear me. My God then will is hearing and will hear me. And it is a rather personal. So we are going to discuss how to encounter that God as a person. And he, this is taken from the book of Micah, Old Testament Micah, chapter 7, verse 1 and to verse 7. Micah chapter 7, verse 1 to verse 7. And uh, let me tell you, my friend, we serve a personal God, a God who meets you at your point of need. Sometimes it is simple to hear testimony. You know he has touched the so and so. We pray sometimes for others, but I can assure you we serve a personal God. He meets us at our point of need. And the question is why? Because each one of us was created differently. When you read Psalm 139, he says, you are wonderfully made, beautifully made. You are unique. You are thumbprint. Nobody has it. Eight, eight billion people today, nobody has your thumb what? Print. That's why me is a very important thing in terms of God. You, 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 as a what? As a singular person. And before we divulge into the word, this morning when I was preparing, I got a simple message from a certain girl I ministered to her last year and listen to what she says. Because my God will hear. So sometimes you pray and you pray and you pray and things become what? Worse. We are fasting and praying in the church and I can assure you, family is possible in turmoil. What you desired to get, possibly you are not getting it. So how come that we pray and we know that our God will listen and he listens, but sometimes things don't seem to be coming our way. So I got this moral message from a girl whom I ministered to last year. Good morning, Reverend. It is me, Dash, again. I just need your prayers. I think I have prayed enough, but God does not answer me. Reverend, I'm tired of suffering. I don't know what to do because I'm depressed, I'm hopeless. I just don't know what is happening in my life. Did God abandon me? I don't have peace. Actually, she sent a series of messages, but I repeat, actually, this is all started when my dad wanted to trap me, but he's tormenting me. Actually, my mom at first told me not to tell anybody because she didn't want to spoil our family's reputation. After that, my dad said he's not my father, and he rejected me. After my senior fall, I started staying with my sister. And she's, you know, she's dropping these messages from her sister's place. She's the one who pays school fees for me, but quickly, so that I got the real thing. My mom told me to leave her. So the sister also abuses her. I mean, those who are gifted in using their mouth for wrong things. She abuses this girl day and night. 
But she, when I asked her, I called. She said, no, everybody knows her as what? As like that. I said, okay, you can imagine such a giftings. Now listen to what she's saying. I'm looking for a solution because the person I stay with is very rude sometimes. She uses even sharp words to abuse me. It is hurting me mentally and emotionally. Even I feel like I'm running mad because she's always say I'm like a, a psychopath, psychopath. I don't have anybody to talk to. Please pray for me. I even read the Bible, but nothing is working. I reach the extent of hurting myself because my life is totally a mess. Now, I read it and I'm preparing. My God will what? Will hear me. And somebody listening now might be in a situation which is even worse than this. Oh, it is a situation that is only personal that you see, and this will be in the text, that you see we are dealing with the society we are dealing with the family, we are dealing with the friends, and it is treacherous throughout. But this man in verse 7 says, my God will what? Will hear me. So verse 1. In Micah chapter 7 verse 1. How does he begin it? He says, what misery is mine? What is me? Those are other Bible versions. What a misery is mine. Why is me? So this man is in pain. It is pain all over. Wherever you look, things are tough. Where he turn to, things are tough. Money can't come. So he's saying, misery, misery, misery. And this is a prophet. Meaning, he knows God. Meaning, he knows how to pray. Meaning, he knows even the mind of God. But this man is saying, what misery is mine. You remember, even Isaiah, woe is what? Woe is me. In chapter 5, actually, when you read it, and chapter 4, it is one, two, one, two, one, two. But when he encounters God, he says, one, to what? To me. So when you encounter God, the flashlight comes to what? To you. And so this prophet is saying pain all over. Misery, misery, misery. And then verse 7. We read verse 7 if you are there. So misery. He begins by misery. But verse 7 is interesting. Because in misery, he says now where our theme comes from. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Can you imagine? In misery, he has hope. In misery, he will wait. In misery, he is sure that God will do what? Will, will be able to answer him. My God will hear me. And so the appeal is to God. If you read the first Chronicles, you can note it down. Chapter 4 and verse 9. There is a man called Jabez. I normally preach about him. In fact, he's among my best characters in the Bible. But from verse 1 to verse 8, Judah produces, Perez, Perez produces, produces. When you reach verse 9, there is a man, the Bible says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. He was named Jabez by his mother because he was born in what? In pain, in misery. The name Jabez means pain, misery. You get it? So the fact that you are miserable, the fact that you have challenging situations does not diminish the reality of God. Let me repeat. In fact, God shows himself in such a what? In such a process. The man was miserable, named by a mother. In Israel, you are named by your what? Your father. In fact, the mother of Benjamin wanted to call him Benoni. The father said no. But then the Bible says, but he cried out to the God of what? Israel, that you will bless me, expand my territory, that your hand will be with me, you will keep me from pain. So, this afternoon, we are going to concentrate on my God who does what? Who hears me. That yes, the situation is bad. Yet, 
there is a what? There is a God. That the situation is so terrible. I'm a job. I have lost all my children. I have lost all my property. I have lost even the wife. V chapter 2, verse 9. Cast God and what? And die. But the man still sticks to what? To his God. And let me tell you, friends, what separates you and others is you to sticking to your what? To your God. And let him be a person of what? A person of God. Where you say, I want to encounter you, Lord. And so, what was the misery about? The first misery, hunger and lack. Verse 1. Let's go back to verse 1. Hunger and lack. I'm like one who gathers summer fruit at the greening of the vineyard. There is no cluster of grapes to eat. None of the early figs that I crave. He's looking for what to drink, he can't get. He's looking for what to eat, he can't what? Get it. Hunger. We are looking for money. And by the way, not money for what we call wants. Money for basics. Money for transport. And it is not there. This prophet is in miserable what? Condition. Hunger and lack. And I can assure you, if this, this, this is a bit poetic, that wherever I go, I don't get. If I see a tree, I touch, and there is no what? There is no fruit. The man is desperate. He's hungry. He's thirsty. He lacks. Verse 7, my God will hear me. So even in your lack, my friend, your God will do what? Will hear you. Your God will hear you. Of course, some of us today, we don't lack indeed. But there are situations where we lacked. I told you once I was at him, staying at Kasubi, and then my cousin sister comes, and I had no job. And she says that when I came back from home, I found the husband had put a what? a rock, and put a note that I have shifted, please don't follow me. So I said, uh-huh, what do you want? She said, I, of course, I had just finished campus and staying alone in Kasubi with my friend, and she said, no, I have nowhere to go, so I have come here. My God, now, we will do eat anything, I mean anything, it means whatever you get. But now she comes and she wants to stay until when I give her transport. Now, staying was okay. But she's adding that until when you give me what? Transport. And I'm a young man saved, but the reality around me is what will you do? And then, secondly, she had HIV, advanced HIV then, 1994. So the landlord came and said, I hear the coughing. I know you haven't paid me for two months, but I don't want anybody to die here. Please, you and her. If she can't go away, please pack and go away with her. Now, I can assure you, of course, now I look back and laugh, but I can assure you, reality is, where are you, God? Why did you even show her where I stay? You get it? And I'm genuine. Because the rice was almost over. It is a house of plastics. You know house of plastics? Plastic grass, plastic plate, plastic chair, plastic everything. And now you have what you would call a burden. And you are saved and you know God. I slept on the mat, she slept on the bed. And I prayed, I cried to the God who listens, my friend. And of course, I will end with that testimony later. But God listens. And he knows your what? Your cries, he knows your desires. So this man said, I lack, I hunger. Wherever I go, there is nothing to pick. We lack and hunger. Hey, school fees is coming. Even before school fees come, they, you know, no electricity, no water. You get it. And you are so sure. 
Okay, this is when you even kubanja. But this time, you are so sure, even in no banja, you will not pay. You get it? You are so sure. Banga and luck. My God will hear me. Secondly, no godliness. Verse 2. Listen to now the society around. This is personal, I hang and luck. But then secondly, there is no godliness around. In verse 2. The godly have been swept from the land. Not one upright man remains. Oh, the godly have been swept. Not even one, one upright man. And normally when we are in desperate situations, we can't find somebody upright. We can't even find somebody who serves God. Because our perception of God, our perception of people does what? Changes. Verse 4, part A. Listen to what the Bible says. The best of them is like a briar, the most upright, worse than a thorn. You get it? That the society around is also bad. When I lack money, I go to the ROC. You know what he does? Please pay 3000 for a stamp. I'm coming because, <laughs> okay, let me not go that side. But he is saying that the society is what? Is totally spoiled. There is no upright person. When you read First Kings chapter 19, Elijah experienced that. When Jezebel was chasing him, he slept under juniper tree. And God said, wake up and eat. Because the journey is what? Tough. But when he reached Mount Oleb, he said that they have killed what? Everybody. I am the only one left. Rationality is not there. The society is not there. He had even forgotten that Obadiah had told him that he had a th 100 what? Prophets. I'm the only one what? Left. And so sometimes in that situation, you look around for an upright person. They are gone. You look around for somebody who knows God. They are gone. But let me tell you again, we have a God who what? Who hears us. And he tells Elijah, at that point that I have 7,000, what? And may God encourage you in your situation that you are not the only one who's standing. Let me tell you, there are people in the public service, there are people who are working with us who are what? Who are upright. Our God does what? My God will hear me. Number three, quickly. In verse two again. Now listen to what is happening. In verse two, they all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man, his brother, with a net. In meaning, they are murderers. They are in constantly, you know, in a game of treachery. Murderers. And of course, I can't mention. You know it? I was reading a story sort of a doctor who died in Masindi. And my, my challenge is that nobody can even pick who killed him. The wife says we slept at 11. And then somebody called him for an emergency, and then they find him dead at 5 a.m. So the, the question is, we can't even trace whether it is the wife, whether it is children are saying we were asleep. You get it. Murder and treachery. Of course, this man I can't mention on this pulpit. You get it. It is surrounded with what? With as many theories as what? As possible who shot, whether they shot, whether they what. You get it. And in Uganda, if you watch the news, murder, 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 treachery, treachery, treachery. And the question is, where are you, God? Where are you, God? I read also a small story recently. A 13-year-old girl picked. She was coming from school, picked raped and defiled and killed. You get it? The question is, where is God? Ukraine and Moscow, Israel and Gaza. Very many questions on where is the reality of what? God and midst bloodshed. A midst bloodshed. But, again, verse 7. A midst murderers and bloodshed. Let's read verse 7 again. 
this man is saying. Therefore, I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. That when you see that, when we watch news and you have nowhere to turn it to, please turn it to your God. And the reason is because he knows it. And because maybe there is a lesson for you in that story. Let's turn to Isaiah 30. I hadn't prepared it, but let's turn to Isaiah 30, verse 20 and 21. Isaiah 30, it is interesting that amidst these treacheries, that actually God has a lesson for the one whom he loves, for the one whom he yearns for. Isaiah 30 and verse 20 and 21. Listen to what the word of God says. This is where the small voice is. But before the small voice, because you normally concentrate on the small what? Voice. Listen to what the Bible says before the small voice. Although the Lord gives you the blade of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Who is teaching the bread of affliction? Who is teaching problems around you? But the challenge we normally, you know, exalt problems over, over what the Lord is what? Teaching us. Verse 21. Then you will hear. You, then you will defile your idols overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold, you will throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, away with you. You get it. So please, as you see adversity, treachery and other things, normally have a what? That teacher coming out. That the Lord is teaching you out of what? Adversity. And so, this man sees the third thing as constant mud and what? Treachery. But the Lord is teaching him. Number four. Now, this one in verse three is very, very interesting. That society was spoiled. But this one is that skilled workers are messengers of evil. Verse three. Let's read it together if you are there. In verse three, we see skilled workers that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asks and the judge asks for a reward and the great man, he utters his mischievous desire so they wrap it up. So what are we saying? That wherever you turn it to, where the heresy center, they want a bribe. Whether you go to judges, they want a bribe. Whether you go to school, remember? Those of us who go to schools, you want a good school? Hey, Reverend, two million we will do. Me paying for my child. And that's a church founded what? School. That if you want a place here, how much? Two million. And let me say this. Because it is all around what? All around us. We, have, we had a child in P7. When he finished, he got six aggregates. His neighbor, his friend, got 13. Okay, we, we said, uh -huh, this church founded a school. We will give the one of six. So we applied and he did whatever people do. And those days, six was very good. Six was not admitted. 13 rang him, saying, my daddy went and he picked a what? So he came and asked me, daddy, you are saved. <laughs> you are a reverend. You are becoming a reverend because I, I was now at Mukono. How can a church founded school choose 13 over what? Over six. Let me tell you, this man is saying that workers of iniquity are all around me. Rulers ask for gifts. Justice is after paying bribes. Power is for dictators combined with efforts to do what? to do evil. It is all around what? Around us. And if you want, yeah, go to somebody stopping you for a traffic offense, even without an offense anyway. <laughs> My son recently told me, 
<laughs> Daddy, we need to shift from Uganda. He said, uh -huh. Can you imagine the traffic looked for something? And he said, I don't have uh, this triangular thing is called what? <laughs> no, 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 not reflector. This one, when you get an accident. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What did he do? A ticket of 100,000. I said, what is his name? So that we pray only. But otherwise, he will pay. That he has no... They are called what? These things you put on the road. But that city that you see all around is what? Appointments, corruption, even in a church. Even in joining. Oof. I met a young man crying. Surely, surely, but listen to what this man says. My God will hear what? Will hear me. What am I saying? That those things will happen. And they are bound to happen. But let me tell you, continue praying. Your Lord will what? Will hear you. So, the implication is that maybe things are happening because we are not what? We are not praying. We are not telling. Number five. Interesting, not trust. Now, when I read this, it came closer home. Number, number five, verse five. Trust ye not a friend. So, no trust. And these are the following. The neighbor, the friend, the spouse. Your wife or your what? Your husband. Ooh. Ooh. Neighbor a bit far. Friend, surely, threatily. Now, you go back home. The one, by the way, the Bible says, the one who holds your heart and that give her no word for us who are men and for women, please give him no word. <laughs> no word. No trust. No trust that when you reach home, you are worried. You put it to the farthest place. <laughs> and your phone, when it rings, even when you're in your bathroom, you come running. Oof. No trust. <laughs> you can't even trust yourself. The implication of this is that whom will I live with? The neighbor, gone. By the way, it is, you need to actually keep reading properly. The neighbor is gone. The friend I used to trust is among those who are giving me in. And then, go home. Bin Laden is waiting. So where do I turn it to? This younger girl was, I want to hurt myself. Desperation. But let me tell you, the biggest challenge is lack of trust for those who are close to you. Mobile money pins. You are the only one who what? <laughs> who knows? These bank accounts, when there is something on your phone, titi, you keep checking quickly. Why? Because you don't trust. And you know, he's saying that even the one you sleep with. And so, friends, if you have challenges at home, Micah, I will ask him, he says, Micah at in heaven, when I meet her, were you part of this challenge? And I can assure you, most of us are part of these challenges. I'm not counseling you, I'm telling you, if you are challenged today, Cry out to your God so that we will be able to be what? To be trusted. No trust. But amidst of no trust, let's read verse 7 again. We shall be reading it again and again. No trust. Therefore, I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will what? Will you hear me? So do you have challenges with your neighbors? You have challenges with your friends. You have challenges with your wife or husband. Your God will hear you. Your God will hear you. Your God 
will hear you. Number six, second, last. No honor. Now, verse six is also very interesting. No what? No honor. And what is this honor? For the son dishonors the father, the daughter rises up against the mother, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the members of his what? Household. So, we come from neighbors, we come from friends, we come from a, a partner whom you brought from outside. But now, you are inside your what? Inside your home. And what is happening? That the son no longer honors a what? A father. You say, do something, and they keep looking at you. And by the way, that's why we quake at a casa. Do you know quake at a casa? I'm your father. Now, the moment you even are mentioning that, <laughs> it means things are what? Are bad. No, honor. Ah, and we do threats. I will curse you now. Again, honor is already done. What? Gone. Daughters and mothers. And I don't know why it wasn't sons and mothers and then daughters and fathers. No, it is clear that the fatherly figure, the fathers we are now making, no longer honor father, fatherhood. The mothers that are on the way no longer honor what? Mothers. So the future is terribly gone. By the way, this is about the future. That nurturing young sons is no longer the duty of fathers. No. They are nurtured by television and other things. Therefore, who is the next father? And of course, we have programs, girl, child, but let me tell you again, we also need the boy child. Who will marry your girl? Okay. I have one and three boys. Now I need to nurture those what? Those three boys. So that when they take your daughter, <laughs> it is not a disaster. The son never honors the father. The girl never honors the mother. Now, the daughter-in-law, who was most possibly the wife, no longer honors the what? The mother-in-law. And on this one, I met a young man. He was telling me, my wife doesn't want my mother home. So the question is, what do you want that poor man to do? Hey, she eats, so don't you eat? And let me tell you now, if you are a Christian and you are listening to me and you are a woman or a man, if you do not look after your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, or your relative, you are worse than a what? A pagan. That's what Paul says. So we have so many pagans in the church. And sometimes they pray day and night. No wonder God doesn't listen. And let me tell you, the shouts of those old people are crying out. And so you, so you can't have peace. Again, the question is, they fall sick. They come to Kampara. And it is as if they have taken all the money. Anyway, even if they take it, let them take it. What is your money anyway? Without your mother or without your father? And those of us from Kampara during Christmas, you know? Hey, we go with boxes of mineral water. Let me not continue that way. But honoring means when you are eating, your father and mother must what? Must eat. And if you never look after them, stop even talking. Stop praying. God will not what? Listen. I'm talking to sons and what? And daughters and daughters on law and sons in law. So it doesn't matter who you think you are. Because you see, when the Bible says honor your father and mother, it doesn't put <laughs> what they call an exception lawyers, you know. Exception is if they are drunkards, if they... No. It is honor your father and your what? And your mother. So if you spend on your family during Christmas, simple advice is go and spend on your what? On your parents also. If you are staying in a mansion in Kampala, and some of you even fear going home, you know why? This is it. And you see the gospel now is uh, diluted. Eh? 
No, it can't be. You stay in tiles, then your mother, the tiling is by cow dung. Let me tell you, you are a curse to Christianity. You are a curse. And this is what Micah is actually shouting about. That there is nothing like me enjoying what we call life and then my mother, my father are wallowing in what? In poverty. And by the way, for any reason, sometimes they, they never pay the fees. At least they produced you. Because when a father, mother doesn't have a, a cross on school fees. So what am I saying? If you are listening, and there are many of us who are victims, please honor your mother, honor your what? Your father, honor your in-laws, and you'll get the peace. So no honor. But then once again, my God will hear me. My God will hear me. Meaning, if I honor and continue praying, my God will hear me. And therefore, even in dependence on children, God will make a way where there seems to be what? No way. As long as I'm honoring God. Finally, and as we end, verse 4, part B. Verse 4, part B. And I desire to end with this because this concerns what we call the prosperity of the wicked. When you look around, sometimes you say, ah, Christianity is not a good deal. Verse 4, part B. The day of thy watchmen and thy visitation comes, now shall be their public stem. Now, the end of wickedness is as follows. That you see, while, yes, we see people prospering, they steal and prosper. By the way, let me tell you, even if you still you won't prosper, at least I have seen it on my children. And I can't say this beyond what I'm saying, but let me tell you, one of my children stayed with him, a very rich person. And then on 21st June, he, Father's Day, he wrote to me, and that's my birthday, he wrote to me a wrong letter that, Dad, I love you. Dad, I what and what? Dad, you are good. Dad, I never knew. And the question was, why are you writing this? Listen to this. That my roommate used to see you and mommy carrying eggs to my room and praying with me. Just that. Eggs. And then sometimes live chicken. Now, I'm married to a lady who will carry chicken from here to Kabale to give that chicken. Of course, for me, I normally say, can't we buy chicken along the way? She says that some chicken are fake. You know, fake chicken, medicine and what. So we would carry live chicken to that young person. And for him, what was a ministry to that, that other young person, that you have parents. And therefore, for him, he now began interpreting prosperity differently. And I pray that many of us will pros interpret prosperity, what? Differently. That the watchmen, people who guard, people who even pray for them, let me tell you that the day of visitation is what? Is coming. It doesn't matter that our prayer today is that God will overthrow the wickedness and begin planting the shabunas who will come and take charge not only of church, but also of our nation and our families. That wickedness shouldn't rule. Why? Because there will be a day of visitation. And that day of visitation will be total confusion. There is a feeling of confidence, feeling of comfort, but when he visits, nothing. You remember COVID? COVID told us that really vehicles are not very useful. We had two vehicles. All the tires were down when COVID ended. To begin it, nothing. Batteries we bought. Engine is collapsed, even up to today. <laughs> what I'm saying is that the day of God is visitation. So COVID came, 
Nobody can claim that they pushed away COVID. Do you know that? It is my God will hear me when I what? When I pray and COVID went. And it doesn't matter. Things will come, but let's continue what? Praying. That the day of visitation will find you when you are what? When you are ready. So those are the seven things. That yes, the day will come. And indeed the day has come that this prosperity we are seeing around will be what? Will be nothing. So our trust in degrees, our trust in knowledge, our trust in anything, it will do what? Corrupt surely. Why? Because my God will come. And that's terrible. The question is, will, will he find you when you are ready? And so let's read verse 7 as we end again. Let's all of us read it. So, therefore, I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. As for Jasper, I watch in hope for the Lord. I, want, I wait for God, my Savior. That's the other biblical word, version. So we are going to read it as we conclude together. But instead of, as for me, you put your name. And then you pray through it. So that we begin having what they call hope and also having one thing, that we have a God of our what? Of our salvation. Let's go, one, two, three, go. As for Jasper, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for the God of my salvation. Watch, wait. Watch, wait. Mark 13, 33, and 37. Jesus says, watch. Then he repeats, watch and pray. And you see, he even watched on behalf of Peter. And he said that the devil wants to sift you like what? Like wheat. But I have prayed for you when you are strong, encourage your what? Encourage your brothers. Watch. And my prayer is that this prayer month we shall be what? Watching. And all of these are prayer points, by the way. All of these are what? Prayer points. Watch as you pray. Then secondly, wait. And waiting is not as easy. But let me ask you, if you checked yourself 20 years ago and now, don't you think waiting is good? If you checked yourself 30 years ago and now, don't you think waiting is good? I normally tell you, my friend, many of us, we thank God he allowed us to wait. And the moment things happened, now we are here. Had we not waited, had you not waited, where would you be? Those who wait upon the Lord, they mount up with wings like what? Eagles. They run and not be weary. They walk and they never what? Faint. That's an Isaiah. So wait upon what? Wait upon God. Things might be tough. And this is a testimony. When I was a young man, I began working in Tororo. And uh, the, those days, people were corrupt. Okay, the, today they are corrupt. But those days, like smuggling was normal. In fact, paying taxes was not part of anything. And one of my bosses told me, and I quote, that young man, I have so many houses in Kampara. In fact, five, he mentioned five. So, get the money when you are young. At least build a what? A house. I said, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in what? In the glory. But Bambe, <laughs> if you looked at me, things were very what? Very bad. But I waited, I waited, I waited. All I needed the money for was to pay school fees. By the way, full stop. Those were, that was my highest need. When I married, it was uh, because she produced twins, first bonus. We needed a nanny. You know nanny? Any, any, any. That was my biggest bill. And let me tell you, I waited. But 27 years later, I wish you would stand here and talk about waiting. 
and waiting and waiting. Where are the houses? I don't know. But the whole family is what? Ruined. And let me tell you, young girl, young person who is listening to me, better you wait. Because suffering may come overnight, but joy comes in what? In the morning. My God will hear me. My God will hear me. My God will hear me. Let us stand and pray. And as we pray, there are so many prayer points and we are not going to concentrate on the situation around but rather we are going to pray for three things. Number one, that we shall watch. That we shall watch. You as a person will watch. That as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. Father, I pray for each person represented here and those on television. That Lord of Lords, King of Glory, Creator of the Universe, that you will make them watchmen and prayerful people and intercessors, that day and night they will cry out to you and that you will constantly but also consistently answer their prayers. Lord, move now. Move now. Let the spirit of intercession go on each one of you so that as you cry out to the Father, our God will be able to hear you because he's the God who listens to our prayers. You say, Lord, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, that if we ask, we shall receive. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, doors will be opened to us. Lord of lords, let every word now that is coming out of these people be able to reach your mother's throne so that as they watch, as they pray, you will be able to respond at your appropriate time. We thank you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. The second prayer point, which is the last one, is that I wait, I wait, I wait. Father, we pray for patience. You are patient with us, O Lord, and we pray for patience that we shall see the salvation of the living God in the land of the living. Those of us with the children that are outside the Lord, we pray that we shall wait to see them coming in. Those of us who have debts, O Lord, we wait to see those debts being paid in the name of Jesus. We wait upon you, our Father, and you say in your word that those who wait upon you, they will mount up with wings like eagles. Give them those wings, O oh Lord. Let them fly. Let them fly over storms so that the world will know that those who wait upon you, you establish them like Mount Zion. May you wait upon the Lord. May you wait upon the Lord day and night. It doesn't matter how many people are saying, don't wait. I pray that you will make you somebody who will wait. And like Moses, you say, Lord, if you do not move with us, we shall not move. And so wait for that crowd by day. Wait for that pillar of fire by night so that you will be able to move with the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord. Yes, Lord, count me in. Count each person in. Count those ones on Zoom. Among those who will wait upon you, Lord Jesus, so that we shall see your salvation. Yes, you are near, Lord. Yes, you are near, Lord. We want to see your salvation. The salvation of the Lord is near to those who trust him. And so wait upon him. Wait upon him. David waited. Let me tell you, David waited amid his trials. There was a time when he became a king. Joseph waited in a pit. He waited in the palace. He waited in a prison. But one time he was appointed. So Lord, do it to these people that before they die in the name of Jesus, they will be able to see your salvation. Let salvation flow. Yes, Jacob waited, and one day he encountered God, and God blessed him and even changed his name permanently. So, Lord, may they wait upon you. For husbands who went away, I pray that you, lady, will wait until when he comes home. For children who totally are prodigal, I pray that, Lord, you release them so that they will begin coming home in the name of Jesus. And for wives who are strange to us, for wives who have even changed rooms, my prayer is that, Lord, you will answer this man who is waiting. 
may he wait upon you, not upon anything else, because you are a God of your salvation. And so let's say, all of us, my God will hear me. 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 In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.